Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we'll be following the journey of Morio Worm to Beetle. Now, Morio Worms are also known as Super Worms or King Worms, not to be mistaken with Giant Mealworms which are just mealworms treated with hormones. Unlike mealworms, Morio Worms need specific conditions in order to pupate and we will be exploring these conditions in today's video. So I decided to take these four Morio worms and put them in four different environments. One with no substrate, no food. One with no substrate, but they did have food. One with substrate and food and one with just substrate. These were all conditions recommended to me by you guys in my unboxing and setting up my feeder insects video. This is how we got on. So it's the 31st of May and as you can see, the Morio worm that has food but no substrate is actually malted. Um, the food is actually dried up, so I'll have to replace that tomorrow. But the Morio worm with no substrate, maybe it's woken up now, but it was on its side curved round. And I usually see that when things are about to pupate, so I don't know if this one's about to. And the first Morio worm has pupated just today, and it was the one that had no substrate and no food. We have our second pupa. Now this is the one that was in substrate but no food. So I'm thinking it could be a survival technique why they go and pupate when they don't have food. They run out of food, they need to move on to the next level, as it were. So the other two are still going. I'm going to keep them with food for a bit. If there is still no progress, then I'll take away the food. But it definitely seems like the no food route really works. And the one that had substrate and food has finally pupated, although I have let the food just dry out, so that might be why. So by this point, three out of four Morio worms had pupated. Now for some reason, the fourth one took a lot longer, but we'll get to that in a bit. By this day, I had noticed the first Morio worm to pupate had started to darken up a little compared to the others. So you'll notice first its eyes will darken and then the legs will follow. Also, I was curious to see the size difference between a Morio worm pupa and a mealworm pupa. So here it is. This is a mealworm pupa. <laughs> They're tiny. What? Anyway, three days later, that pupa whose eyes had darkened was now getting closer to hatching. As you can see, its legs and antennae are now dark as well. And two days later, it actually hatched. I actually put the pupa in this cricket box overnight because I could tell it was about to change. And as you can see, it's probably just hatched out. It's still a light colour. Trying to get a photo of him is near impossible, but what I wanted to show you is you can actually see his wings through his back. So Bertie the beetle died, which was a uh, Mario worm beetle, and I wanted, I didn't want to waste him, this is totally out of focus, I didn't want to waste him, so I fed part of him to my carnivorous plant and part of him to my ants. He was definitely already dead. And when I popped off his back, you can see these wings underneath, it's quite interesting. This was a very busy day for my Morio worms. The second pupa, who had no food but did have some substrate, started to darken up too. And finally, the fourth Mario worm pupated. However, this whole journey was filmed over a fairly long period of time. And this fourth one has food and substrate, similar to another Mario worm. So I think three of them ended up with substrate. I don't know how. Maybe midway through I decided to change things up. But um, from what I found, giving them no food at all seems to be the quickest way to get them to pupate. The next day, I managed to capture the second Morio worm hatching, or at least like slivering out of the pupa. I find it quite interesting how you can see the wings sort of stretch out before they get neatly packed away under their wing plate. I believe these are fused so they cannot fly, so this must be some kind of ancestral throwback. This particular time lapse was filmed over two or three hours. And the third beetle has hatched out. I don't know if the hot weather is actually increasing them hatching out, but you can sort of see three stages here. We have the black, that one's finally black, that one is a darker brown. This is what it looks like when it first comes out. Now this is just where I've been holding them, but I will set up a proper breeding tank for them tomorrow. So, we have the earth mix arid in here. I'm not really sure if they need it particularly deep, uh, but I'll leave it like this for now. I'm going to add in some water. That looks like quite a lot. But as I said, it's been really warm here and the last thing I want is them to just dry out. 
so hopefully that will mix <laughs> that looks slodgy um i also have a lollipop stick this is wooden and um i know some when i had millworm beetles they used to like lay their eggs on here although they have been known to chew these but you know maybe we'll get some mori worm mori mori worm eggs on here so i'm gonna do that we have <laughs> i've made some little hides i don't know if they will actually use them I'll pop some food in here with one of the beetles, the eldest one. There you go. The second eldest. And then the final one. I love how you can just see all the different colours. Just the, the stages of development. Um, so, we have three. I feel like it's going to be a while before the last one comes along. So, it is the 9th of July. And we still have the three beetles. The other one should be probably hatching out soon. And I think I've established whether they're male or female. I found something online. And there are very subtle differences to the faces of the males and females. And if I have determined their gender correctly, there's two males and one female. Which actually makes sense because one of them is... I think this one. Oh, it's biting me. One of them is smaller than the other two. So maybe the females are smaller only thing with holding these is they do bite you so I'm getting a little bit nipped right now definitely this one here so if that is the case I'm really hoping the next beetle to hatch out is female so we can sort of even things up so the final beetle has finally hatched and I've had a close look at it and it appears to be another male <laughs> so we have one female and three males so the Moro worm production may be kind of small if we had three females one male that'd be really handy um so i may need to isolate a few more morio worms and hope they turn into beetles and really hope that they are female but we're going to introduce this one into the colony i guess are four individuals a colony i don't know so as you can see there's one uh they do like parsnip i've been giving them a variety of vegetable scraps they're doing really well on it but yeah there's one there they tend to actually hide under these little hides. Yeah, two there. I've yet to find eggs, but in fairness, I haven't really had a good look. But if we look over here, like that little thing here, that could be an egg. Who knows? Anyway, we will introduce the final male, though I'm pretty sure fertilization has already taken place. So it'll be a bit useless at the moment. So, as I record this, it is the 31st of July. It's been a very long journey and still no signs of babies yet. However, when looking in my darkling beetle enclosure, I found lots of baby mealworms, which are super cute. So this is what we're going to be looking out for when we look in the Mario worm enclosure. Of course, if we had more females in this process, it would be much quicker. I actually separated another Mario worm. It pupated fairly quickly, and now I am waiting for it to hatch out, and hopefully it will be female. So a few points to consider when breeding these. Number one, it seems the best or quickest way to get them to pupate is by just separating them and giving them no food. Two, apparently this is how you can tell whether they're male or female. Three, it isn't the quickest of processes, but I imagine similar to the mealworms, once you get going, you'll soon be overrun with them. Remember, Morio worms aren't the healthiest of foods for your geckos, so only offer a few now and again, but this is a fairly easy, low maintenance way of getting free food for your reptiles. So I hope this video has helped. I'll probably do an update once we have babies and the newest beetle has hatched out so we can see if it's male or female. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. But thank you very much for watching, guys, and goodbye. Ow, 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 ow. It's on his biting me. Oh, it's biting me. These two are intimate. I, I'm not quite sure what they're doing. What is this? That is the wrong way.